everyone, I'm Steve. I'm here with Dr. Melvin Nario, and we've started this little mini series on the B vitamins. We did uh, one through six, and then we did B12, and today we're gonna do B9, folate. So, uh, Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. They do a lot of what I think are cool treatments and so on treat different ailments and for someone like me just to keep me healthy um so you can check out biointegrative online um it's in reno nevada and you can kind of get more information if you're interested if you want to reach out to me you can get me at stevemain.com so welcome dr nario hi steve thank you for having me again always a pleasure Okay, so we're going to talk about B9. That's folate, right? Um, and I want to first get some benefits of it. But there's folate and, and there's folic acid. But let, let's just, right now, let's just talk about um, what are the benefits of B9, folate? All right. So folate, B9, folic acid, as everybody knows the term, uh, there's so many benefits for it. Again, it's more known to really in the medical world to repair DNA uh, structures that are damaged in our bodies. Another one is for regeneration of red blood cells. And even, uh, again, hearing loss, always you have to have folate on board and also prever uh, preserving brain health for children or infants. And that's why when we talk about folate, we talked about the most absorbable form, which is methylfolate. And again, when you hear about nervous problems, nervous tissue problems, brain problems, you always think about folate, folic acid, or methylfolate, because it's always involved with these reactions. Even with mood, arousal, cognition, social functioning, I always think about this specific um, vitamin. And again, one of the most important things that I have to emphasize here with folate, folic acid are our reproductive females. A minimum of 400 micrograms per day is recommended, especially among pregnant women. Folic acid should be increased at least even minimum of 600 micrograms, especially during the first trimester uh, of conception because it prevents the congenital malformation or deformities of the brain and spine of the baby. And again, I always emphasize this with my visits with my pregnant or soon-to-be mother uh, patients. And again, it lowers down the risks of, of these issues. And even during breastfeeding, something that I always promote, 500 micrograms per day as a good uh, maintenance dose. Okay, if you guys need to hear that, you can rewind and uh, uh, go listen to the dosage again. So I know there's folate and folic acid. Now I'm under the understanding that folate is in the better form. Am I right? Or <laughs> is there a difference? Tell me about folate and folic acid. All right. So Steve, when you talk about um, folate, uh, again, folic acid is a general term, B9. And again, these are one of the must haves supplements and commonly partnered with a B12 or in a B complex, or it's in a solo form, so many different ways to get it. But again, majority of folate, when you say folate is found in plant sources and are readily available for absorption. Dark leafy greens, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, spinach are, are good sources of natural folate. And these are the vegetables that we always eat uh, on, on our table. That's why overcooking, uh, these vegetables, this is where uh, vitamin B9 uh, gets destroyed. So the folate content gets destroyed with excessive heat exposure. Now going to your other question, what is folic acid? Folic acid is a synthetically manufactured substance, substance found in supplements and even fortified food. So you would see the government is fortifying um, baby food, for example, with, uh, with folic acid now, again, or ma vitamins for moms to, uh, I guess, for um, future moms to protect their future babies. Okay, because I know I take a B complex, but it has folate in it, not folic acid. Right. So that's kind of interesting. So what are some of the signs or symptoms of 
uh, vitamin B9 folate deficiency. So, Steve, there are so many, again, we're talking about broad range of symptoms here. This is like, uh, you can't even determine if it's specifically folate deficiency, but fatigue, mouth sores, memory and cognition impairment, irritability, loss of appetite and weight. I mean, that's not even specific, but those are one of the, the major ones. And other health problems also can lead to folic acid deficiency. So if you have anemia, depression, allergies, and lower bone density can be related to low um, folic um, acid, folate uh, as well. But the most common one is anemia. When you have low folic acid or folate, uh, there is um, uh, the, the sizes of your red cells, they become larger. So when they become larger, they lose that ability to deliver healthy oxygen to your organs. So that's why they're, they're normal size. They can grab onto oxygen properly, but when they're bigger, uh, they can't grab onto it properly and distribute that. So that's going to be an issue. And again, deficiency occurs in also um, uh, the ones that are lacking in, lacking in supplementation. Uh, examples, of course, during pregnancy and lactation, you have now uh, two individuals or two human beings consuming folate. Um, and also during uh, breastfeeding. And again, other conditions such as, of course, drinking alcohol, kidney disease can lower down um, B, um, B9 levels. And again, the food industry has made sure that this is not going to be an issue anymore because they have started fortification. In the past, it was a big issue, but now rarely would you see that this is a big problem. And changes of folic acid, um, chances of folic, uh, folic acid have giving you an overdose is very hard because you have to remember this is a, a water soluble vitamin and if you get an excess you just urinate it out okay so uh, let's talk about the ways that you can supplement or get um, these b vitamins b9 into your body i do as you know i do a vitamin bag there at the clinic it has 30,000 milligrams of vitamin C. It's got a ton of all of the B vitamins and um, amino acids and minerals. And it's a bag I love to get. Um, but you can also do just a vitamin B bag, bag, right? With all the vitamins, all the B vitamins in it. You could do a B push. A B push is maybe after you get an IV and they push the, the B supplement into where your drip went and you can also do um, vitamin b injections uh, just b12 or, or whatever you can also take vitamin b orally and from some of the foods that you mentioned so can you tell me when you might want to uh, bump it up or how often you might want to do something like i do like a vitamin bag where it has all the water soluble vitamins in it when would you want to do that and is, is just taking a capsule okay um tell us a little bit about our options on how to get this in our body well steve all legitimate um i guess pertinent information that you just mentioned there but again i want to emphasize to our audience here that nothing beats getting folic acid or folate from natural food sources as I mentioned above a while ago, and as you did as well. But again, in the fast paced life that we have, it seems like supplementation by default is something that is now necessary in our daily requirements. And oral supplementation is the most convenient, accessible form, but, it, but the absorption is the one that we're gonna be questioning because of the, the gut barrier, uh, or the, sometimes the leaky gut syndrome that we have. As that's why the more effective way of delivery is through injections. May it be IM injections or through the muscle or intravenous. And since this bypasses the GI tract, it ensures 100% delivery into our systems. We give them in our clinic, in our practice, in combination with uh, other vitamins, for example, as you mentioned, the vitamin bag and, um, and also through the injections, which is like we have so many combos with it. It comes along with B12. It can go with the B6. So it depends on the need of the patient as we assess them. And again, the more, more of the recipients of these vitamin bags are more of the, the, healthy, the healthy athletes, for example, because they 
they deplete a lot of, of vitamins and nutrients through their workouts and people who are needing a boost in their immune system. So you have to remember immune system feeds on vitamins and nutrients for it to be active to protect the system. And also for people who just need a quick jolt of energy. That's why it's, it's always a, a, a win-win when you talk about receiving vitamin uh, B9 or just the whole vitamin bag. But in, 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 uh, in a person like you, like the athletes, uh, once every two to three weeks, it depends really on how intense their exercise and regimens are. Because as you have to remember, every time you exercise, you deplete yourself of these nutrients and vitamins, and we have to put them back in there. Yeah, well, there you go. A number of ways we talked about on how to get vitamins into your body. Um, great information. I really liked this series about all the different B vitamins. You guys can go back and, and find the other ones that we've done on the B vitamins if you're interested in all the different B vitamins. But we thank you, Dr. Nario, for um, your input, as always, and your expertise on, on these areas. So that's Dr. Nario, Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. Thanks for being with us, doctor. Thank you, Steve, for having me. As we all know, knowledge is power. And thank you for letting me provide you with edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.